everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I am Mad Cavern. This is another video on Watcher of Realms. That is right. We're on the Watcher of Realms channel, but we are not alone. We're with a longtime friend and a personal, uh, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan of J Giggs, Giggsy, Jonathan. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> I appreciate, man. The uh, the 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 fanness is very mutual. I'm a big fan of you as well. There you go. Little. We'll we'll get into the spicy details of of that a little bit later, as we talk about it. So today, I wanted to invite you onto the channel to talk about. We both play Watcher Realms. We both play Raid Shadow Legends. We've both melted down, just in the sheer audacity, and I don't even know if it's ineptitude or just plain planned ignorance that Plarium has had at times. So I thought mm. we could talk about a couple things and we could go over what we think Raid could adopt from Moonton, from, from Watcher of Realms. And then, because all's fair and, and they're not perfect, we could look at Raid and say some of the things that Raid does really well that we think that Moonton could adopt from them. Sound like a plan? Yeah, sounds good. All right. Now, before we do that, I like to get to know those on my channel now i've had you on the channel once before you were my first collab you always remember your first it was great you you cuddled me afterwards you did it was nice i got <laughs> to be the little spoon I, I was appreciated that because you know being my size i'm usually the big spoon but being that you're seven feet tall it, it, it just worked you know right but uh i don't think we really talked about you so we're gonna do a little we're gonna do a little. Hey, this is this is uh, Jay Giggs to start the uh, start the show. So, grew up in Memphis. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then at some point you decided to move to New York. What explain what? Why the Big Apple? Why the big the Big Easy? Why, why um, New York? I met someone there. You met someone there. So that mm -hmm. so that person lived in New York. You decided. You know what? Great music, great food, terrible people. I'm leaving this place. <laughs> Except for your family. Obviously, your family's awesome. But, you know, the girls sucked. So I'm going to move to New York. You move to New York. Yep. Yeah. You get married. Yep. Doesn't, doesn't work. As, doesn't you know, work. hey, I know where you're at. My fiance actually is just finalizing her divorce. Doesn't happen, as we'll get to. Sometimes bad things in the moment turn out to be great in the future. Sure. And if you're watching this 10 years from now, and George has kicked you out, then, oh, them damn Australia. <laughs> but we'll assume that this is a forever thing and that she's awesome and right for you and this is meant to be. Right. So, you're, so, so obviously things go well for a while there. Uh, this is where you kind of start your content. I would say for Raid Shadow Legends is in New York. Is that... Did you I do, started making raid content in New York. Yeah. Did you make content while you were still in Memphis? Like before, were you a content creator then? Not in the same sense. I had uploaded to YouTube a bit in the past. I had a I had a channel where I would do um, some like piano tutorials. And then when I was a little bit younger than that, me and my brother used to make really really stupid comedy skits and upload them to a channel we had. So I wasn't completely a stranger to YouTube. But I, I had no real aspirations of being a content creator because I didn't really even understand that that existed right. uh, at the time. Right. So, so you're in New York. You start playing Raid Shadow. How did you, how did you find and get into Raid Shadow Legends? Uh, I think there was a commercial on TV that, or, or, or a YouTube video I was watching. One of those. Very good commercials. And, uh, they did. Had great commercials. And I, I had been making Summoner's War content for a while. Okay. And uh, that's kind of slow going. The, the the crew was already established, and it was kind of hard to get started. I had a couple of videos that did okay. My streams did okay. Uh, and then when, when I saw the commercial for Raid, I was like, man, that's this is going to be a big one because it had graphics that we hadn't seen before. Uh, and so much ambition. They were the most ambitious. <laughs> they um, were, so I, I heard, <laughs> I don't know if you heard this, but I heard that they had desktop-like graphics. Yeah. Yeah. And just in a mobile game, more ambition than anyone yeah. could could handle. So, so I literally ambition. saw the ad. I downloaded the game and played it for about a half hour, and thought I have to go start making content on this game now because it was brand new. And I was like, I can I can jump in and kind of get ahead of the curve. I already know the the recipe a little bit. I know how to make guides. I know how the game works. So I uh, I tried to jump in and and sort of get ahead of it a little bit. Nice. Now, 
I don't know if everyone knows, but you had the second, <laughs> the second earliest unkillable composition video on Raid. You had actually been established by then. I, 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 I don't, I don't know the timeline. Do you feel was that the first video? That was the man eater. I remember you put out the man eater because literally a week prior, I had put out a Sir Nick one. It's my only claim to fame, so I hold on to it dearly. Is that I put out the first unkillable? It was a Sir Nick Roshgard comp, but then I saw the the man eater one, which seems so much easier to do. <laughs> I really wanted a man eater, but was that was that the first video that really popped off, or did you have some success prior to that? Man, I'll be honest, I really don't. I'm really not sure what my first video was that popped off because uh, I was doing a lot of guides. I was doing a like a how to build and my goal was to just go through every champ so some of them would do pretty well because some champs were more popular than others yeah. um but but the real significant turn for me that i noticed was when i started to do comedy yeah stuff and, when and i stopped making guides obviously we got to talk about that because i think a lot of people who who have seen you and know of you think of your comedy think of your lyrical genius if it were <laughs> But I don't think they realize that you were actually a pretty good technician of the game before that. Um, and so when people think, oh, I'm going to go get technical, I'll go to Murder, Inc. But if I'm going to be, I want laughs and entertainment, I'll go to J-Gigs or Darth, those sort of things. But I don't think they realize you were, you were actually a pretty good tactician of the game. And I think you were in the first creator clash or the creator, and I think you actually held yourself pretty well in that, if I recall. Uh, the Affinity Cup, maybe. Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, I won that, actually. So, I mean... You know, suck it, chosen is basically what we're saying. <laughs> suck it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm certainly not as in touch with the technical side as I as I used to be, but there was a time where I, I held myself yeah. in pretty high regard. Yeah, better than chosen. <laughs> yeah, definitely. From better, Nebraska. Better chosen, sure. <laughs> Nebraska. <laughs> okay, so so there so here we are. You're you're making content, and then the video that I mean has become pretty much synonymous with J gigs and both the absurdity and the love, the love hate relationship with the game. DJ RNG shows up mm -hmm. in his full six foot five orange laden glory <laughs> in his apartment, white walled and everything. <laughs> How did you come up with that? Tell, tell us about that. Cause that was absolutely glorious. I appreciate that. Um, I think I had the name for a long time. I, I I had the idea in my head that it would be funny if there was a a rapper, and his name would be DJ RNG because obviously the RNG element of the game. Um, it, but I never really did anything with it because I I struggled when I was younger and up to that point a little bit with with feeling like I was not very creative. I think I struggled with creativity for a long time. Um, and I finally just kind of hit a point. I think I think I had done the video making fun of people who do raid ads but don't really play raid that was the first thing i did that wasn't yeah. a guide and it went over pretty well and i just started to make myself step out of my comfort zone more and then i thought i'm gonna try to write a rap i've been saying for years i think i could rap um so i'm, I'm gonna test it i'm gonna see if i can write something that i think is pretty good so i wrote it and i felt pretty good about it and did it and it went over really well uh, oh but God. that that was one of the more intense things I think I've ever uploaded. I felt that was the biggest step out of my comfort zone, perhaps, that I've ever taken yeah. as a content I mean, creator. Because not, not only are you doing something non-gamer, like you don't, you can't just lean on the game as your source, right? On top right. of that, you have to you have to rhyme because apparently that's uh, I'm missing that <laughs> kind ability. Of important. Uh, in rapping is the and the tempo apparently is another so i mean i feel i could rap if it wasn't for the rhyming tempo cadence and you know pitch if you have to actually kind of sing a piece of the but other than that i feel like i'm I'm right behind you so i'm glad that you did it first really set the set the stakes but uh, that was really great and of course you had raidzilla another absolute monster put together with some other very very actually i would say very creative and uh, yeah man it was such a cool I squad. Mean, and then you've done collabs with Darth. Now, Darth was a person who I think I never liked his raps at first, but when I actually listened to him, he's a bit of a genius. Like the way he put he's, words together is just yeah. sometimes I felt like it was a little bit too, um, I don't know what the word is, but when you actually, I took a, you know, watching his stuff again and watching his stuff with you, especially, I felt like his lyric, his ability to 
create lyrics was absolutely mm -hmm. next level. So it was really great to see you guys collab. It's unfortunate it didn't more of those videos didn't pop off, but uh, so we'll move on for that. We all know you, DJ RNG. We know J Gigs. We know the uh, the CEO of Plarium. Uh, we all know the the infamous uh, and beautiful, uh, like beautiful like it should have been in American Beauty. Like if they did American Beauty after that instead of the stupid bag, that's the most beautiful thing in the world. It would be Wait Shadow Legends, which might be the most the most amazing uh, amazing thing I've seen because it was just so bang on, and that's when the best comedy happens is when it's absolutely true. So you go through that. You go through a divorce. New York is expensive for two people, let alone one. So I, I assume that's when it's time to, you know, maybe you watched Wedding Crashers. You thought, geez, Farrell's character's got a great gig going on. Maybe I'll do the same. You move back home for a while uh, in the basement. Mom, meatloaf, all that stuff. You keep creating. I think it would have been pretty easy to quit. But you're like, no, I'm going to get my meatloaf yeah. and continue to create content for Raid. Right. At what point did you decide... Cause, cause that's a pretty sweet gig. That's a pretty sweet gig. Probably low rent. Probably like you know, mom's like, okay, you got to pitch in two hundred yeah. bucks, son. Like this is, your dad and I want date night, and you're downstairs. It's awkward. I can't tell if we're still doing a bit. <laughs> I, I don't know if we are either. But uh, my mom lives in Texas. Oh, your mom's in Texas. Well, then that yeah. makes it very difficult. Um, so, so whose parents were you living in the basement? Well, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that. Okay. So you, you decide, you know what? I've already played this Memphis game. The women here are, yeah, they're country. They, they have a twang. I, get, I don't know what you're... So you decide, I'm going to look for... I'm going to look for a girl who's British. But that's not enough. You know, not old jolly old England. Let's skip New York, go to London. No, no, no. You decide to go to Australia. Tell us right. about how you met your current girlfriend, fiance, soon to be, I don't know, uh, is there girlfriend. a girlfriend? Wow, man. It, it, be, listen to Beyonce. Better put a <laughs> ring on it. I'm just saying. <laughs> but anyway, we'll get to that at later. Uh, so tell us about your experience of Memphis, girlfriend, Australia. Um, so I don't know. We met. It's funny. We met in a Discord. Do you know who Chris D'Elia is, the comedian? No. I, I mean, well, he, it rings a bell, but not specifically. He had a podcast, uh, and then he started a Patreon. And through the Patreon, you could get in the Discord. Mm. And uh, we, of course, a lot of people joined the Discord. And there was a, a group of us that, that all hit it off and started our own Discord, probably about 15 to 20 of us. Oh, nice. And she was among those people. So we, we all talked every day. We, it was pretty tight-knit group and we just continue to get closer and uh yeah uh beyond that i'm i'm not uh, clearly not opposed to uh an adventure yeah <laughs> a big move do you uh, i spent a lot of my youth moving around so it's not really a big deal to me to move sure in that way yeah uh so i'm and and i like to get around i don't want to stay where i was born i want to see the world and and get around so it was a lot of work to get here but it wasn't like a it's a big thing if it doesn't work out because yeah. if it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like it is what whatever. It is. And it's I think the, everything the, is the fact is. that you're a content creator full time. And I think that probably leans pretty well because one of the great things is as long as you have internet, you can work. Yep. Um, yep. Because the IRS might be watching. We won't get into further specifics of what sort of <laughs> tax legalities behind that are, but we'll just say you can work wherever you are with internet. We'll just say right. like that. So you're in Australia now for what, a year? Uh, May will be two years. Two years in May. Actually. Holy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, time you, is flying. It's you crazy. haven't been bitten by any of the dangerous animals. Nope. Or your girlfriend. So that's good. Uh, wow. Yeah, I've I mean, probably seen less spiders here than in Memphis. Uh, really? To be honest. Really? Yeah. Snakes? Um, I may have seen one snake. Are you in, in wild, Sydney? If that. Yeah. So, well, I imagine you aren't in the like downtown Sydney, are you? You're kind of in the. The burbs of Sydney, um, the hood. Somewhat, yeah. Apparently, Australia doesn't get like everybody thinks it is until you get really in the center of the continent. Mm. It's it's the, the areas like this are just just 
pretty standard, except every now and then you'll see a huntsman spider, and it's like, okay, that's different than anything else I've ever seen. A huntsman spider. Like, yeah. like a spider that looks good on like, paper, but you can't really find a use for? Huh? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I, like, I like the pause. Thank you for the pause. I was that like, really made yeah. it. Uh, so okay, so we've done that. I I didn't think I would go this long, but I enjoy getting to know about you. So that, I thought that was really fun. Now let's yeah. get into the the rest of it. It's only going to be an hour and a half. Did I tell you this is going to be an hour and a half video? <laughs> I'm sorry if I didn't. Uh, I've blocked out four hours. So oh, good, good, good. So okay, so what we want to now get into. Thank you, by the way, for sharing part of your, I guess, travel with me. I do. I, I kind of. I would say that I do. Um, I do have sort of a, a. I don't know what's word I'm looking for, but my fiance, who we just got engaged uh, last October, she lives in Seattle. So, um, actually, just out out in the burbs of Seattle. So I will also be moving. I'm kind of a lot like you. I've moved all over the place. So this is. I mean, I didn't go to Australia. I felt like I should just try the neighboring <laughs> continent instead of two or three later, if indeed Australia yeah. exists, which we're still on the. I, heard, I watched some really great flat Earth theories about Australia, so we're not a hundred percent sure. But you Best still I don't, can tell it's real. But who knows? Honestly, I can hear it, and you still have a Memphis accent. You don't have an Australian accent, so that's strike one against Australia. Because if you were in Australia, you'd have an Australian accent. I'm sure Is that how it works? You just talk however the Absolutely. places you walk into. Unless you're okay. from Scotland, in which case you never lose your accent because my grandparents, to the day they died, lived in Canada <laughs> from 68, 1968 to like 2010 and always had an accent. So, uh, But uh, everywhere, other than that, yeah, no, that's how it works. Pretty sure I read that on trumpfans.com. So it's got to be true. All right, so let's talk about it. For three things. So we, we okay, we're gonna leave out the fact the monetization piece because we know rate is very aggressive, very predatory. You can use your own words. If it could be aggressive, could be predatory, it could just be they're trying to make the most of their situation. Might maybe the most neutral way of putting it. Moonton yeah. does the same, probably not as aggressively, but they're also younger, right? Raid wasn't always yep. like this either, so we'll we'll leave right. that out. So let's start, and I'll give you the first shot. What's one thing that Watcher of Realms does significantly better than Raid that you wish Raid would adopt? And I'll, I'll actually bring up Watcher of Realms so we can. Um, do we want? Are we are we trying to like rank this as like big thing to small thing, or just throw out anything? Just, just three things. Yeah, just if you have three things in your head. All right. Uh, w one, I think that's pretty good that Watcher does is uh, you don't lose energy for failing a run. Yes, that is unless you canceled like outright. So if you can restart, that's a great point. So I'll show you what he means here. We'll go into a raid. I go into gear raid two. Say I'm going to try to push for 20. It's 22 energy. I start. That's fine. And uh, you can, you know, say I, I accidentally put someone the wrong way. Oh, I put it the wrong way. You can come in here. You can restart. No harm, no foul. You can quit the battle. I think quitting the battle costs you the energy. Maybe even that doesn't. I think it does not. I does guess we'll not. find out here. You had 147 going in. Oh, good. Yeah, there you go. Camp and 148. So there. So you only lose uh, if, and I don't know, maybe if you if you played it quite all the way through, maybe. But... Um, yeah, absolutely. You don't lose energy. So I'll throw a second one at you. Three and a half times speed. Hmm. One of the worst things about Raid Shadow Legends is the amount of time it takes to play if you want to play everything in the game. And one of the biggest telltales of this game over that game, and it does require the Raid Pass or their, their version of the Pass, which you have to purchase. So... Maybe that's maybe that's what we'll say is the privilege card versus the raid pass mm -hmm. is significantly better because for ten dollars a month or fifty dollars over six months you get three and a half speed, you get ra extra random drops, you get extra random gear drops, you get forty uh, more auto fights, you get twenty percent more experience, twenty percent more gold, and you get extra max stamina. All that for the same amount as the raid pass, which gives you yep. double XP and extra gold in campaign. 
Like it, it's the extra gear drops alone is worth it. It's, it's crazy. It's significant, right? But yeah. the biggest thing for me is that three X because the time yeah. factor. I'm a spender. I've spent a lot of money in this game. You can tell. Uh, Gigs and I are in the same. I think we're still, yeah, we're in the, the same guild. I've already passed him, and it's not because I'm some kind of genius. It's because I've spent way more money than him <laughs> on this game. But I, I don't mind doing that. And so I can come in here. Again, we can go to Gear Raid 2, and I can auto-fight whatever stage I've passed. And I won't talk about power dominance. That might be a third one. But uh, you go in this one fight, and if I hit start, it's going to do it at three and a half times. Mm-hmm. You get so, 3x free to play. And you get oh also. you get three x free to play oh there you go I didn't know that yeah. I've been a dirty spender since day one. You you so. have to unlock it through the storyline missions that can can be completed start to finish. I think the fastest is nineteen days. Yeah, and somewhere yeah. around halfway through you get the three x speed oh, there you anyway. Go. So and I probably I probably saw that, but they had a good bonus on the first purchase for the for sure I had it too. Pass, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just, so I had it before I got it, but. That's that's good to know. So anyway, so this we won't I won't play it all the way through, but you know, just that three and a half times for me is is huge. Uh next one for you. I think um they they are much more liberal with giving out summons. Oh my god. You it are it's not uncommon to have forty, fifty summons every week without spending any money. Abs- absolutely. So for example, Elowen uh was just the banner that ended literally yesterday. And I haven't bought anything. I bought some for the Elowin. I I missed. I already have fourteen, yeah, ancients. Right, the same. These here they call them rare summons. I had zero. I had less than eighty eight because I couldn't even pull one last one of diamonds. I already have, and then divine summoning. I already have one, and that's in like not even a full day playing. I also have ten, uh, of their their what they call ancient summons. And oh, right, yeah. None of those were purchased. Those are 100% free to play owned. Now, that's been two weeks, I believe, since the um, Cyrus banner. So that is a significant amount more. That is absolutely, yeah. Good call out. Uh, for me, and we'll go back to the same thing I was, I nearly mentioned the last one, um, is, I don't know, if I, maybe I'll just keep hitting heroin. We'll see what that happens. <laughs> uh, if, if you, once you pass a stage, you get power of dominance, which means you get all stats 30%. So you can grind your way to a level pass, and then your everyone you put down has 30% extra stats, which means your auto battles are going to be significantly more accurate. And then you can go you can go ahead and you can even manual it with the power of dominance to get more efficient and get faster times so that when you do use your auto battles, it's even faster. I think... Man, you know, when you when you eke through that first Fire Knight 10 hard, for example, on Raid, and then you have to eke it out again because you had to manual through things or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be, uh, it sure would be nice if we had Power of Dominance uh, yep. available to us. So uh, for me, It's a power cool concept. Dominance. I've never seen it before this game, but it's a cool idea. It is. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it forces you to push hard when passing, but then you can kind of breathe and relax and look at something else once you've passed. So yeah. is that three each or I feel like I think that's two each. That's two each. Yeah, I think you got one more. So what's you got a third one for me? Uh the way they do fusions, I think oh, hands down, blows right out of the water. Absolutely. So you can get two copies most of the time. They did a legendary one for Christmas, and if you really wanted one, an extra copy, you could have gotten an extra copy. Yeah. Uh very good, doable. Good shout out. Here was the last uh legendary one. Um I don't know if I can show And he's really good. And he's really good, absolutely, which is, depending on the fusion, could or could not be the same, <laughs> the same about the other one. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. think – so when you go to this events tab, which is going to be my third one, so we'll get there in a second, but uh, basically it just tells you all the different things to get his to get his uh, his his extra fragments. I actually overdid by 64 – uh, I didn't place to get two copies of the legendary. You had to win several of their version of the tournament tournaments tournaments. So I didn't, mm. but I still got him in full with 64 extra. And it really didn't even break a sweat to do that. And to your point, the Epic, uh, before that, which was Pyros, which is a really good Epic. I actually did get an extra. You see, I have the one there. Mm-hmm. I actually I did, did also, get two yeah. copies. And again, 
I summoned a lot, so I won that tournament. But I think that's the only tournament I won, and I was able to easily get two copies. Of yeah, them. same. Yeah. I, I probably could have gotten like two and a half. I don't. Maybe three were possible. I don't know. But I didn't even really go go that hard, and yeah. still easily got two. Yeah, absolutely. A great call out again. Uh, I'm. <laughs> there's so many more I want to talk about, but I think I want to go to the events tab itself, because with Raid Shadow, and you were in the content creator program, you know this, and. Uh, this won't be out till tomorrow, so my other video will already be out. So I'm gonna, so I'm safe in in a spoiler alert here. Uh, there's a big event coming tomorrow, and it's on lockdown. It's so crazy on lockdown. I have an NDA. I'll get murdered if I say that there's wow. a very popular uh, collab coming in, and I can only say that because I know you're not gonna tell anyone. And uh, it'll be out 3 a.m. my time. So another seven hours and this video will be out 8 a.m tomorrow morning so i think i'm safe there nice. and uh, is it the seven day login thing they've been talking it, about is coming it, it will be a seven day login they've been they've been hinting at it there's also it, the fragments part of it the fusion is also a part of this thing it's a really cool event but okay. literally i have an embargo for that's released 3 a.m tomorrow 9 a.m utc tomorrow these guys not only do they not have that embargo, they have they they have a seven day calendar. They tell you what's happening, right? The whole week. They tell you what's going to happen in the future, so you're not guessing. Like we can see, hey, look, there's going to be a two a two x for for legendary heroes. Look, and one of these is for ancients. One of these is for or sorry, one of these is for rare summons, and one of these is for legendary summons. But uh, you know on. F on Friday, that's going to happen. And on Raid, we wouldn't find out till like Wednesday night for Friday. Mm -hmm. I guess you, you'd find a little bit earlier because you're in a closer time zone to them. But it still is like this one day maybe. And I really like yeah. that. They, they, really, they really want you to know ahead of time what's happening. And you get notices like this. Like this is where they tell you everything. The Immortal Codex, they told us way in advance of the first one there's the intro of it they just they give you all the information in game well in advance and i, I really like that as well yeah they're really transparent and that's yeah. why it's it's i don't mind spending money in this game because yeah. i don't feel like they're trying to trick me into doing it yeah they've they monetized stuff of course but like raid seems like their whole goal is to empty your resource mm. bank so yeah. that you have to buy to participate it's like stop doing that yeah Absolutely. you don't have to do that i also want to give an honorable mention to the the marketplace which best market in a game hands down. actually oh this is i'm not just messing around this is what i would do all the time i buy anything with gold that makes sense if there was a red which is an ancient uh artifact here i would purchase it as well with gold um i don't purchase these with diamonds but you can get discounted energy with here mm -hmm. and then on top of that you have your guild shop which by you see i've already bought the rare summon so i guess you could argue that get, like here's another example. They give me the opportunity to buy two rare summons, just from participating two, in the yeah, arena. Two from there or and the, three from the arena tab. Yeah, I think, two, right? yeah, exactly. And there's demon soldiers, part of the the guild versus guild, which is if you want to learn Plarium, So another honorable mention on how to do mm. a fun, different pull you out of the game version of a clan versus clan. Learn from these guys because they're clan versus clan. You may not love it if you're playing this game. You may love it. I don't know. But the fact that the, it's a completely different style, it's a different yeah. concept, and I think it's brilliant and beautiful. And they've got some art. Same with Arena. Out. And same with Arena. Yeah, it's a different, completely different thing. You see here the Arena shop. I can uh, – how much do I – I don't have a lot, so I want to save it for my skill dust. I can – look, I can buy the equivalent of tomes from mm -hmm. the – from the marketplace and look here i mean it's one a month but i could these are what you need for tomes later on so for those who don't play this game or, or are newer at the game you get a certain number with just dust you can skill up your champions and then it requires a legendary skill tome so or um, crystal and the so. dust just drops i'm sitting on over a thousand dust yep. right now like yep. at a certain point you're just never going to need for dust I use a little bit more, but I, I do appreciate it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah. always empty. But I'm, I'm always building champions, so that's it. Uh, so How far are you in Tide? What's your, what's your Tide 133? stage? 133. Ooh, nice. 133. So, okay. Um, and I just passed that recently. It's it's uh, it's getting tough. I, I actually it passed is. 133 by actually having to game plan. 
which was crazy because the beginning you're just like this is a stupid mode i'm just hitting but then there's a point where like oh oh okay this is yeah it turns into a real issue at a certain point yeah really interesting moment this is where you get you just you can just farm skill dust right you see i have 873 the epic skill dust i have five of the legendary i skill all my wow so what i do with all my legendaries is i actually skill them up until they need crystals same and then I, I do that also so yeah. and i've spent a heck of a lot more money i don't want to talk about it uh <laughs> we're just we're mm. so you can see i have, I have oh. a, few, a few legendaries so okay uh, yeah it's, oh, there's a couple more but yeah so i've i think i have 34 so um Okay. I'm, I'm invested. Let's put it that way. Oh, you got the Silas Virna combo, huh? Oh, and I, it's, I hear and Silas with Virna is the best champ in the game. I, I'm mowing through Arena, and I'm hitting people that are like 400 BP to my 350, wow. and my and my Silas just out DPSs them. It's uh, no, I, I imagine I'm not going to out DPS Deegs and stuff, but yeah. uh, you know, nonetheless, it's really fun. All right, so nice. now we've talked about what Watcher of Realms, and as much as we do like to uh kind of dog pile on raid sometimes the reality is they are where they are for a reason they're the number one in sure. the market they're the number one in the space for a long time so let's talk about what raid shadow legends does well that watcher of realms could learn from go ahead okay uh let's kick it off with doom tower um i think i think watcher sort of has what may be considered an equivalent with um What's it called? Nightmare Void the, Rift the or whatever? Void Rift, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Void Rift feels so tedious to do. Yeah. It is It is not really fun or engaging. It's It's such a chore that I skip it most weeks. Uh, Doom Tower is pretty solid for what it is. Let me see here, the Void Rift. So I haven't started it this week. I, and, and I think the thing is, is that they don't have, like, it's a, like I've, I've already passed this phase before. So now I, they don't have an auto for this, which is something that in Doom Tower is actually yeah. one of the few things that they've done very well is they've created an auto. Now I'm on my yeah. free to play account, so we're not, we don't have, we can't get through past this guy, but um, you can auto these stages, which is just beautiful. And you can, you can get the auto battles for, for this. Unfortunately, it's not instant battles, but at least you can do the super raids. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Doom Tower, I really like. That's a good call. Uh, for me, it's the epic pool of champions. I think that one of the most biggest misses of Watcher of Realms is there are so few epics in the game. And if if you say like a percentage of raid epics, 20% of raid epics are legitimately end game usable. And maybe 50% of them are early mid game usable. And then there's like 40 or 30% that are just bad. And you could probably say the same for Watcher. But Watcher has so fewer epics. Mm -hmm. And they haven't added one since global release. Yeah. And it gets to the point where you're like, we would love to see, sure, Dolores, amazing. Um, Hollow, amazing. Um, But, yeah, then what? Let's move on. Like, we're... Like I, yeah. Especially for me, I did the I built them so you don't have to. I'd love to do that in Watcher Realms. The reality is, uh, it'd be a very short series. It'd be a mini series, one could say, because there's just not enough in there to be able to 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 a pool to draw from. So that would be something yeah. That's that interesting as well that you mentioned that because that was one of my biggest issues with the Awaken Chaos era was like, stop only adding legendaries. You, you're gonna have to finish. The roster. You can't just stack legendaries now that, yeah. that you've launched. So yeah, that's an interesting shout. I don't. I didn't realize they hadn't added any since they came out. Yeah, it was something we talked about on the um, on the twenty four hour stream with Fastidious, and uh, I had known there wasn't enough, but then when I heard they actually hadn't added one at all yet, and apparently two that they added at the start were bugged and taken out, or I don't know the specifics behind it. I didn't start on launch, so. But uh, yeah, so next one for you. <sighs> what does Raid do better? I'm honestly struggling to come up with things that I think they do flat out better than Watcher. Because um, one of the thing, one of the praises I gave Raid was how much fun it is to summon in the game, but it's kind of fun to summon in Watcher it also. Is, it is pretty fun, unless you don't so, get Elowin. Unless you don't dude, get Elowin. I, I didn't get her either. And you spent I so her. much money. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't spend any money, so you it's go over your budget. <laughs> 
<laughs> and your and your ex is looking at you like you went over budget. It's fine. Um, uh, there's some super raids going right now. That's pretty nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yes, I will say, like, to be fair, super raids are a great addition to the game. Um, they're free, whereas to get those extra drops in war, it's not guaranteed. It's it's only sometimes. And it has it's part of the pass, so you have to have the pass. So I would say we'll give it to them. Uh, judges, yep, yep. Well, we'll like I was gonna... thinking, like there's a lot more to do in raid, but raid's five years old and Watcher's been out yeah. for months, so I don't know. Maybe we'll we'll go with super raids for now. Super I'll raids. think of something else. I like it. Uh, <laughs> I like the advanced, and it's funny because I didn't like it at the time, but now that now that I've gone through it, I do like the great hall. I like that you're really? getting because, and I think even more so, it's a miss for Watcher because I like Watcher's Arena more. Yeah. So if I like Watcher's Arena more and I want to do it more often, sure we get we get points. You get points in this. There's tournaments going on all the time. There you get the points to use in the in the um, dwarf association thing. Uh, but it would be nice if there was some kind of stat based reward for arena and i don't know how they would do that they do it with the pantheon which is their version of faction wars so maybe if they had something like that maybe that only scaled in arena so that it didn't imbalance the whole game or maybe it's sure but i i think i think i like the fact that there is these bonuses that you can get in is, uh, for doing arena if only arena it, were is, better is it is it that you don't like that you can't choose where your points go in watcher for the for their version of the great hall uh, I think it's because it's not arena based. Like I don't okay. in the arena. The only thing I can, the only thing I get essentially, I get the weekly rewards, which both of them have. But I, this is really the only thing that I get. Which, when you really go out and I do five a day, I basically get one of these a day, a huge stamina potion. I've got, I've or, I've bought thirteen legendary skill dust, and that's maybe. I'll be able to buy both these summons and some more dust by the end of the week. So it's not a ton of rewards, but there's no permanent. And, and maybe it doesn't need to be the Great Hall and stat bonuses. Maybe there's unlockable cosmetics, but I would like to see some kind of. Just something else. Yeah, yeah just okay. I don't I don't know if it's like it's not that it's it's it would be nice to have. And I think that raid having not only the weekly kind of. Here's your here's your gear for completing a week in in the in the arena, but also having this great hall where you you get to work towards bettering your team, mm -hmm. however that may be. And I don't think it needs to be the same. I think there's a lot of issues overall with the implementation, but I do like having that great hall, which is funny because, like I said at the beginning, I hated it, but once I started getting better in the arena and started getting better rewards, it kind of felt a lot better. Yeah. So. All right, Let's see if you can come up with a third one. No, I've got I've got a couple now. I've, I've thought of a couple actually. Um, let's say uh, gear management and raid is leagues above gear Ooh. management and watcher. It is a such a pain in the ass to do a gear cleanse and watcher. It's that, kind of a clunky interface. That is good. And raid call. has gotten pretty smooth. Now and and now raid's been through to be to be fair, raid's been through two iterations of this to get where they True. are. But this yeah. is pretty slick. Everything you want, you can hide set filters now. So it's like the old days. If I need to find just the best speed piece on my account, you can hide fully reworked if you're trying to work stuff up. You can go primary, substat, priority of what you want. Like everything about it is definitely so much cleaner. If we go over to to Watcher, and you go into there, uh, and and having just done a whole bunch of uh, gear rating, it is so much. First of all. I can sell it from from here. Well, not here, but uh, from here I can sell it. But then I have to go one at a time. So, oh, I have this mass sell button. But now mm -hmm. you got to make sure your filters are right. And then you got to go through each one. And it's like, is this one good? No. Oh, this one, maybe I want to roll this up. Oh, yeah. yeah I want to roll it up. So now I have to kick yeah. out. I have to roll it up. The rolling, the actual rolling up is very similar. Like I actually don't mind that. You enhance it, you hit her to eight, it goes pretty well. 
pretty much the same. I know they slowed it down for some reason in the latest update, but it's still pretty good. And you can actually sell it from right here. It's like this one's not good yeah. for me. They added that. You never used to be able to, so they've already started to improve. So that's nice. But at the end of the day, especially on this side here, so much this, of this needs gear, a whole rework. This this needs, is terrible. Absolutely, you should be able to enhance it from here. You have to be able to. That's crazy right? that you can't. Uh, and then it shouldn't be an automatic sell. You should be able to look at pieces, and actually, like in raid, you have the little sell tick. Mm -hmm. Once it says sell, then you're highlighting. And the crazy thing is if you go back and you highlight something and then you unhighlight it sometimes, like, oh, it's not doing Of course, it's not doing it now. But it would, like, highlight it and show it, but it wasn't clicked, and then it was. So it was, I don't know. Yep. It's, all it's all clunky. Absolutely. Good it's call. very clunky. Good call. So um, for me, ooh, a third rate thing that, you know what I'll say is that, hmm. Boy, this is a tough. A it's harder one. than harder than people think it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, maybe their their forge system seems more fleshed out, and I don't know if that's a fair one to say because Raid is five years old, four and some years old. So they've had a lot of time and a lot of iterations of this forge, and it wasn't always there. And when it first started, it wasn't always great. Mm -hmm. And there's still so many bad things about it. So I'm not sure if I want to say that. I know you cannot actually forge gear in this game you can forge artifacts and you can with the foundry you can ascend gear mm -hmm. actually there we go gear ascension in raid is so much cleaner and smoother uh granted you have to do the sand devil but taking the aside that maybe you have the good team whatever these materials I don't know how to get them. I mean, I get them from the the Void Rift. The first time you beat the Void Rift, it gives you like 200 of them. But to do one of these, if I if this was my great piece and I wanted to up it to the new style, right? So you can go from mm -hmm. Night Terror to Ageless Wrath, which gives you bigger base stats. And this is on a, an ancient mythic piece, which is makes it one of the best pieces in the game. It's got some good rolls. 200 of these blue stones and five of these yellow bullions Interesting. Gear, i so, haven't done any of this yet yeah so it actually really helps like i have a couple pieces that i've done this piece for example you see it's an i mean that's a ridiculous piece dude. piece yeah look like this guy's got all my best stuff right so eventually i'm trying to get all this stuff to be in there but you notice like and i don't understand it so this look at this piece here it's an ancient cursed bangle cursed bangle it looks really pretty it's got great stats on it but I, it's not here i don't know what makes something be here is it only you can't do curse why is it you can't do so i don't this whole thing is very poorly explained mm. i'm guessing it's only certain artifact sets can be ascended um, and they get ascended to the top to the gold pieces like this and like the this yeah. one here, but um, yeah, it's it's very clunky, it's very poor. Whereas raid, it's simple. You, and especially now that they have the chaos dust or whatever that stuff is, you mm -hmm. go in, you farm, you get enough oil, you ascend. If it isn't what you want, you use the dust till you get what you want, or you just say bygones be bygones. And rather than making it a new piece, which then means I've broken a set like this one here, it made sense to do it. But I used to have them all in curse. So I actually broke a set in order to ascend. I think yeah. this piece ascended. Maybe I'm just lying. But either way, it holds true. It's possible. So I think that's my <laughs> third one is that the ascension is a lot smoother, clearer, more well-defined, and, and more well-explained, I think. So so there you go. We found three things that Raid does well. Yeah. Any honorable mentions? Do you think you can come up with a fourth? Yeah, honorable mention. I'm, I got one for both. Uh, cool. For Raid, we'll say perhaps there's more depth in, in customizing your own characters between gear and masteries and accessories and, and blessings. and there's, there's a lot more diversity in the way you can build a, a champ. And yeah. to be fair, there's pretty good diversity in Watcher, but it, it kind of is limited to gear and the artifacts mm -hmm. for the most part. Uh, you can use them all in very different ways that perhaps you can't get away with in Raid. So maybe it's a give and take, but um, pretty 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 deep system of making your own champs unique in Raid. 
Mm-hmm. And then for Watcher, I think we, I think we got to go with the Battle Pass or the Dragon Pass, as it's called. Oh, the Dragon Pass, good call. I mean, it, there's crazy value in there for a mobile game. So just so everyone's aware, this top line here, this free line, has legitimately free. Like, just go to the Foundry. I'll, I'll go to the Foundry. Um, from level one, this gives you epic gear. Like, that's not a big deal, rare dust. But then all of a sudden. I actually get an ancient summoning crystal. This is where you get this is the pay to win crystal. This is the where you get the 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 lords, the the best yeah. chaos yeah. champions in the game. Yeah, you for get, for raid terms it's like a primal shard basically. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, this is um uh material you use for for making um artifacts. You get silver, you get more chickens. So you get some gems, so it's 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 free to play. It's immediately free, free to play. But I would say the fact that the the more ain't the more sorry rare summonings they give you, just overall, I think that this line is marginally better. But once you spend a little money, it's it's insane. It's so much better. It's not like hey, I'm just gonna buy a free champion. Now let's go over to raids and show you the what their what their pass is all about. Is if you don't already know, Watcher's free tier is better than the paid tier in raids for sure. Yeah, like this Minus stuff. Getting the legendary at the end. This stuff here, yeah. Ignore the like. Even in this case, it's the Forge Pass. This is legit. Maybe these can all flat stat. So potentially you might end up with no good gear. You get one six star chaos. The XP here is no good because typically you're there with three days left. So you get three days of a ten percent boost. These um accuracy charms have you i've never in my life been in a time i'm like oh the one thing i'm missing is an accuracy charm <laughs> like if only if i only had I an could accuracy get more charm. charms yeah. for the forge resistance that charm. Would change my oh game. my god crit now <laughs> i will say i i did a whole lot for cvc because we were pretty competitive for a while so i ran out of rank charms and rarity charms yeah i have done that a couple times but but that but that's it like I'm on my free this is my free to play. And I have 36, 41, 43, 24. Like I this is a free to play pretty young account. I can't like my main account has these are in the probably in the thousands by now cuz who uses them? So yeah, absolutely. Uh the 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 passes and you look at the champion pass, it's even more embarrassing. Ignore the champion. Yeah. Itself. How much is this thing? $55 Canadian. So that's probably thirty nine ninety nine US. Mm-hmm. Think so. For ten dollars more, they also sold a, a legendary champion. But that legendary mm-hmm. champion came from a specific pool, so you got a pool of of one faction. You also got an auto star up, which is the same as uh, the hamhawk that they have in this game. I don't yeah, know what yeah, they call the it. feast and the barrel. And I think you also Both got two thousand gems. I'm gonna say. Which is you know or diamonds, which is the same as here. So I feel like just that thing, which isn't a pass, that's just a pay to win feature, is even better than than what this is. Mm-hmm. And on top of it, if you look at this as a pass, this stuff in the bottom line, like, bro, they they love but, throwing out clan boss keys. But, uh, like I yeah, like, twenty nineteen, like it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like. When, when if you if you you had to quit the you know now you can quit the game and it doesn't count before if you quit the game, it counted yeah. the key. So if the game crashed, it counted the key. So having an extra key was like gold. Like, plarium points, ten. Not only is it plarium points, <laughs> but it's ten. <laughs> like, oh my god, couldn't even give you a six star speed glyph, no. which will roll a three anyway. Yeah, That'd I absolutely too much. see that. Um, but when people will say, "Well, the legendary is worth two hundred and twenty bucks," so it's there's good value in it. That's true. And Horden is we we know is worth fifty. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, for those who don't know that inside joke, they tried to sell legendary champions once upon a time, or not even sorry, epics, and they had Horden for fifty dollars. Needless to say, I don't think anyone bought maybe someone did i can't imagine i mean i guess there had to be people that did it but holy cow what a mistake well they never did this is the only other champion i can remember they've just really outright sold xena she looks like xena by the way i know you have a beef on this but that looks like xena that looks like xena (laughs) the pictures look like xena um 
<laughs> this looks like a middle-aged white woman with a crisis getting braids. That's Chrissy. <laughs> Chrissy. That's Zena's older, <laughs> not as talented sister. Not as successful. Fuck it, Chrissy. Take off my <laughs> uniform. I've told you a hundred times. Hercules is calling. <laughs> uh, poor girl. Like, what happened? Ninja looks more like Ninja than she looks like. Yeah, Ninja looks rough. Uh, anyway, so, all right. There we go. Those of you, I hope you enjoyed it. It was, We talked about <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends. We talked about Watcher of Realms. They both have pluses and minuses. Uh, we talked about the sordid life and history of Jonathan, won't say his last name because it's none of your damn business, but it starts with an H. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look him up in Sydney now. Don't be that guy. Jonathan H. You see, there can't be any more of them. That's uh, pretty good. Thank you. Thank you. Damn. It's all I got. So don't ask me to repeat it. Somet <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't come off so well. Uh, anyway, I want to thank you. Uh, it's been far too long. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on, dude. Always I appreciate you up. joining me. And uh, for those of you watching, hopefully this will be the first of many. Um, maybe we'll do the other one on, on a raid channel one time. Uh, I still have three hours in my block, so we might just, uh, we might just record that one right now. Yeah. He's like, maybe we'll just start a podcast, dude. Oh, there we go. You know what? I miss the podcast. I never thought I'd say that, but I miss the podcast. We should have a raid watcher mobile gaming podcast. Do you talk about the one Saf used to do? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was, was on cool. there all the time. I had nothing better to do because I was lonely and single. But uh, anyway, thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not alcohol in there. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Please be kind, be safe. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.